New this morning, the White House uh, breaking yet another promise when it comes to Obamacare. Yep, this time admitting the website apparently won't be ready by the end of November, as has been promised. And you combine that with these sobering stats. On the day the health care website debuted, only six people were able to sign up, and only 50,000 have enrolled as of last week, according to the Wall Street Journal. Maybe even less. Yeah, with stories like that making headlines across the country, do the American people even want Obamacare anymore? Joining us now to discuss is Senator Ted Cruz, certainly someone who's been vocal about it. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. It's great to join you. Thank you. You know, a lot of questions uh, today are going to be coming across on the Hill, um, certainly with the, the rollout of Obamacare. But what, what's the end game here? I mean, some people say, let this thing die, let it suffocate, and, and the truth will come out. And other people say, well, let's just fight it bit by bit. What's the new strategy here? Well, look, the problem is it, it, it's falling apart, but as it's falling apart, millions of Americans are hurting. We're now up to roughly 5 million people who've lost their health insurance because of Obamacare. And I got to tell you, Elizabeth, when you travel the, the, the state of Texas, as I do, and, and you meet people across the state who've gotten one of those letters, who've lost their health insurance, these are people with, you know, children with diabetes, with serious health issues, and they're just scared. And, and at this point, it, it's clear Obamacare isn't working. And, and, and I think Congress needs to step in. We need to show real leadership and fix the problem that Congress created. We need to stop Obamacare. Well, you mean stop it or fix it? Is it fixable? See, I don't think it's fixable. The White House is coming in with all of these fixes and, and little bells and whistles, but they're not going to work. It, it is fundamentally flawed. And, and you know, I got to say, at this point, in my view, stopping Obamacare is, is the essence of pragmatism. Three and a half years ago, it might have been possible for reasonable minds to differ. There might have been some who, who would have said, well, maybe this thing will work. Let's give it a try. Today, nobody's saying that. Nobody can defend it because millions of people are losing their jobs, are in part-time work, right. their premiums are skyrocketing, and they're getting their health insurance canceled. We need to just, we need to stop it and start over because it isn't working. Yeah, another million people got canceled in California yesterday. Uh, Senator, you know, I know your, your side is united in getting rid of this thing, and now there are so many voices from the Democrat side. I'm, I'm curious, why did Bill Clinton pick yesterday to come out and take the president to the woodshed and tell him to uh, honor his commitment. Well, that, that was certainly revealing, and, and it suggests perhaps that Hillary Clinton is looking to run away from President Obama and run away from Obamacare. And, and, and that ought to be a signal to Democrats, this thing isn't working. And, and when President Obama and the Democrats keep fighting in a partisan way for a law that is taking away the health care from millions of people. More people lost their health insurance because of Obamacare that have been able to sign up for it. That should be a real signal that, that we ought to get some bipartisan cooperation to come in and say, listen, it's not working. Let's start over. Sure. Uh, Senator, I want to shift gear to something I know you care deeply about. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a site dedicated to it as well, prayers for Pastor Saeed Abedini um, in prison right now in Iran. Uh, we actually had his wife, Nagme, here probably about mm -hmm. six weeks ago mm -hmm. um, when it, there was hope um, that President yeah. Obama yeah. could maybe mention this and have him freed. I hear he has been moved to a new prison, um, that which holds murderers that have been convicted, mm -hmm. and his life may be in true danger. Yeah, no, it, it's really heartbreaking and it's dangerous. Uh, Pastor Saeed Abedini, who, who is an American from Idaho, uh, born in Iran, w was sentenced to eight years in, in prison for simply preaching his Christian faith. He went there to start an orphanage, and they threw him in prison. And then last week they transferred him from the Evan prison, which is horrible, to the even worse Rajay Sher prison, which is where they put, it's their death row, it's, it's the worst place there is. And, you know, Iran did it on the 34th anniversary of the date that they seized American hostages. It's what they call Death to America Day. And, and, and this is just wrong. I mean, and, and let, me, let me commend y'all. Fox News has been so great about highlighting this case. His, his wife, Name, who has been stood by him, has been just a pillar of faith. But, but it, it reminds us of the, of the blessed li liberties we have here to, to worship God in Iran, they're imprisoning and torturing this pastor simply for professing right. his faith. And, and, and I hope the president calls upon President Rouhani to release Pastor Abedini. It's the right thing to do.
All right, the bipartisan letter to President Obama goes like this. We believe this new action by the Iranian regime merits additional response. It is an imperative for the United States government to speak out boldly on behalf of the Pastor Saeed and the earliest possible opportunity. But on top of that, we're on a different track. We're looking to cut a big deal with them and yeah, recreate yeah. relations with them. I mean, we're giving mixed signals. Well, the, the deal that, that John Kerry was trying to negotiate on behalf of the president, I think, was a terrible deal. It was really striking when, when Israel's prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, publicly calls it a very, very bad deal because it wouldn't stop Iran from developing nuclear weapons. It lets them keep their centrifuges, keep their enriched uranium. That was a mistake. But, but let me praise President Obama for a moment. In September, when he spoke with President Rouhani from uh, Iran on the phone, he raised Pastor Abedini's case and that was the right thing to do and, and, and I'm glad President Obama did it. It's why we saw a bipartisan group of senators urging gotcha. the president to continue raising it and, and a moment of encouragement. You know his wife Name has discussed that, that even while Pastor Saeed is, is imprisoned he has been leading his fellow prisoners to Christ. There, there, there are wow. reports of up That's to great. 30 converts that, that, yeah. that, that he has stood with his faith, e gotcha. even in that dark hole, and we've got to remember him and, and work for his release. Well, you're up early doing it today, so I'm sure the family appreciates it. We like having you on. Senator Ted Cruz, thank you. Thank you for having me.